Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're exploring the intense and dystopian world of Dark Planet Part 2, Rebellion. This sequel, released in 2009, picks up where Dark Planet Part 1, Inhabited Island, left off. It features the same director, writer, and cast. If you're having trouble following the story, I recommend watching our previous video, which is linked in the description. Max and Guy manage to escape the border and head south. To prevent Guy from resisting, Max has to knock him out. Once they're far enough away, Max tries to wake Guy, but is unexpectedly approached by three heavily armed individuals who, instead of attacking, offer them food. Meanwhile, in the capital, Lesnick, the attorney general, is receiving multiple reports about Max's actions, from his daring escape to taming a notoriously fierce creature. This impresses Lesnick and adds to Max's growing list of remarkable abilities. Back with Max and Guy, they are taken to a mutant settlement which is far from their expectations. The mutants are friendly, and their leader, Prince, sees potential in Guy's strength and intelligence and wants him to take over as their leader. However, Guy suspects that he and the other mutants are being manipulated. Prince then invites Max and Guy to discuss a plan to attack Vaderland. Although Prince supports Max's plan, he doubts whether their weakened bodies can achieve it. Max's strategy involves using the Fierce Barbarians, a risky move that could lead to mutual destruction if it goes wrong. Recognizing Max's noble intentions, the mutants agree, but still recommend that Max seek advice from the Witch, a highly respected figure among the Utan tribe, before proceeding. Eager for guidance, Max and Guy travel through the mountain valley searching for the Witch. Uh, rumors say she can float in the air and control creatures like bats and mutants. Guy finds these stories unbelievable, but Max has some doubts about them. As they get closer, they hear the growls of wild animals and see two mutants lying still in front of them, as if they were hypnotized, which seems to confirm the rumors. Soon they find a cave filled with thousands of bats where the witch lives. The witch doesn't speak with a mouth but communicates directly into Max and Guy's minds, possessing both male and female personalities. She warns them that while their intentions are good, their actions might destabilize the planet. She advises against attacking the transmitter and rallying the barbarians, as this would only lead to countless corpses along the Blue River, a fate the mutants have long avoided. Max argues that freedom is a fundamental right for everyone. Without it, people are no better than the undead. The witch, recognizing Max's potential, hopes he can control his power and use it for good and doesn't push the argument further. Similarly, the prince advises against heading to the desert to confront the barbarians directly. The only viable option is an expedition to an island kingdom, reachable only by a white submarine in the Southern Sea. This journey would take five days and pass through a radioactive zone surrounded by 12 transmitter towers. Prince reassures Max by giving him his most valuable treasure, the Mountain Eagle, an air combat vehicle once used as a bomb launcher by a king. The vehicle has enough fuel to take Max south. Max is deeply grateful to Prince and promises not to forget his kindness. He confidently flies the vehicle, which isn't much different from ancient Earth vehicles. During their journey, Guy feels something trying to control his mind. A nearby tower emits radiation, causing Guy to sing again, but this time without a tune. Suddenly, he goes into a rage, and Max is forced to crash their vehicle into the transmitter. Guy felt fine, and Max was relieved their vehicle could still fly. However, this relief quickly fades as they pass through a forest and are shot down by an anti-aircraft gun, forcing them to make an emergency landing in the Southern Sea. Despite the situation, Max and Guy find the adventure so incredible that they can only laugh at their misfortune. In the capital, Lesnick's investigation leads to information about Rada, a woman who is not only beautiful, but also simple, friendly, and kind-hearted. This is why Max falls in love with her. That night, several men, including officers, surround her because the Attorney General has issued an arrest warrant. Back with Max and Guy, they finally find the white submarine. According to Guy, it was swept away by a storm and eventually destroyed by patrol forces. There were no troops on board, just a strange and terrifying man with the rank of corporal. Max laughs again, realizing this planet has elements similar to horror fairy tales. Max asks Guy to wait while he checks the ship. 
Meanwhile, Lesnick shows a video of Max destroying the transmitter. Lesnick believes Max is a good person who was deceived by others. He shares more about Max, including stories about the beautiful and peaceful planet Earth, and says that Radha could be reunited with Max if she assists Lesnick. Unfortunately, she refuses and ends up in prison. An hour passes, and Guy still hasn't heard from Max. Worried, Guy decides to follow him. The ship's inside is eerily haunting, as rumored, with mysterious sounds echoing through the corridors. Guy finds Max sitting in a corner, healthy and well, deeply engrossed in listening to the Royal Sea Communications radio. The strength of the signal from the device amazes him. Their search leads Max and Guy to tubes containing mutant specimens, and eventually they arrive in the control room. In the control room, a video shows the horrific brutality of the Sea Kingdom, displaying massacres and experiments on humans and mutants that are even more brutal than those in Vaderland. Max is horrified and questions the morality of allying with such cruel forces. After a brief argument about what to do next, Max and Guy decide to return to Vaderland. Max plans to devise a better strategy, but first they must surrender to the soldiers so that he can protect Guy and himself. That night, amidst the chaos in the prison, Rada finds her cell door suddenly open. She tries to escape but is soon recaptured by soldiers led by Fank. The next day after surrendering, Max is in the southern prison. The prisoners are divided into two groups, those granted amnesty and those conscripted for mandatory military service. According to his plan, Max chooses military service and reunites with Zeph and Viper, who are also pardoned for their efforts in collecting weapons. Meanwhile, Stranick is pleased with how Fank has handled Rada. With Max now in custody, Stranick instructs Fank to treat Max well, offer him a job, and assure him that Rada is safe. However, Stranick's plans are disrupted by the ongoing war between Vaderland and Han, forcing him to leave. He hopes everything will be settled when he returns and warns Fank to be cautious around Max, as he is very dangerous. The next day, mandatory military service begins under the leadership of Captain Chachu, who explains the rules impartially, stating that everyone, whether soldiers or civilians, will be treated the same. Fank searches through the crowd of prisoners for Max, and upon finding him, the captain refuses to release Max from military duty, even though it was ordered by one of the Vaders. Soon after, Max reunites with Guy and is placed in the same group as Zeph and Viper. Following the captain's command, everyone quickly boards a tank. Fank reappears, offering Max freedom without any conditions, but Max refuses, unwilling to abandon his friends. Fank then tries to kill Guy, but he is immediately overpowered and thrown into the tank. The battle begins, with all prisoners forced to advance and break through the enemy's defenses using old tanks. The soldiers control the prisoners using special armored vehicles with radiation transmitters. Max takes over steering when his friends suffer from seizures due to the stress. Soon after, they manage to escape from the battlefield. Unfortunately, Captain Chachu secretly follows them, waiting for the perfect moment to attack Max. Realizing the danger, Guy sacrifices himself to protect Max. As Chachu aims at Max's head, knowing a headshot would be fatal, a rod suddenly pierces Chachu's chest. At that moment, all of Vaderland's tanks fall into an enemy trap and are destroyed, showing how Vaderland's arrogance has led to their downfall. Fank invites Max's group to join him if they want to survive. Max agrees as he worries about Rada, now held captive by Stranick. The following day, the government buildings, especially Lesnick, are in turmoil because the attack on Henty was his idea. The highest Vader cannot accept the failure, which Lesnick should have anticipated. The highest Vader allows Lesnick to find a solution, or he will face the death penalty. Amidst his panic, Lesnick receives news that Max is now working in the special research department. He immediately contacts Fank to prepare everything for his inspection. Sometime later, Lesnick comes to the special research department. Taking advantage of Stranick's absence, Lesnick seizes the opportunity, incapacitates Fank, and enters the laboratory to meet Max. Instead of looking for a solution, Lesnick plans a coup. He offers Max access to the central transmitter tower to change the frequency and incapacitate everyone, then broadcasts a secret recording nationwide. After the government falls, Max is invited to lead the country, with Lesnick as an advisor. Lesnick also reminds Max not to forget about Stranick. Stranick is very dangerous, 
Invader's power can't be overthrown if Stranach remains alive, so Max has to kill him. The next day, Max implements the plan with Seth and Viper, while Lesnick prepares to receive radiation exposure in his favorite bathtub. Suddenly, he gets a call from Stranach, reporting that Vader is in dire condition because a traitor has damaged the tank's defense system, impairing 90% of the transmissions. Stranach promises to visit Lesnick to get his opinion. Meanwhile, Max and his team arrive at the transmission center's skyscraper. After briefly discussing the plan, Max enters the building with determination and focus, successfully convincing the security officers. Inside, a staff member requests an entry warrant as a ticket to the control center. Max demonstrates his power by quickly incapacitating all the officers present. Despite others rushing in to intervene, Max, without hesitation, continues forward and activates the radiation at a different frequency. Instantly, all the citizens feel intense pain. Lesnick laughs the loudest, pleased that his plan was unfolding. However, Stranach is the first to sense something is wrong with the tower. He appears very angry and immediately drives toward the transmission center. Max has a plan to destroy the transmission center with a bomb. After ensuring everything goes smoothly, he heads to Rada's location at the Crystal Swan, following Lesnick's instructions. However, he encounters Stranach on his way, and a chase ensues, ending in a fistfight. The countdown ends and the explosion occurs, causing all the previously suffering inhabitants to rise again, confused but relieved as their pain has ended, thanks to Max. Meanwhile, Lesnick weeps as his hopes are shattered and the central tower collapses. The explosion further enrages Stranach, prompting Max to retaliate with a kick as he rushes to find Rada. Max finally finds Rada inside the Crystal Swan building. Zeph and Vepper fight back elsewhere, seizing weapons from the confused soldiers. They soon find Max and Rada blocked by Stranach. Stranach is unfazed by Max's threats and threatens to kill Zeph and Vepper if Max doesn't order them to leave. Stranach rages even more upon discovering that Max has blown up the basement of the central tower. Because of Max's actions, everything Stranach had planned for so long is destroyed. Stranach admits he has been on edge for the past 20 years and reveals that he is a human from Earth who has planned to save the planet. Max thinks destroying the tower is the start of freedom. However, Stranach predicts a dire situation. Without radiation, chaos ensues as all the inhabitants realize the gravity of their country's situation. Worse still, the Sea Kingdom has won the battle at the border. Learning that the radiation has disappeared, they prepare to launch a massive invasion with an incoming combat fleet. Shortly after, as Stranach fears, Lesnick, whose home is surrounded, commits suicide, and other prominent leaders escape. Guilt renders Max powerless, and he is beaten continuously until he is battered and bruised. Stranach tells Max to stop his foolish actions, as he will never understand the planet, and suggests he return to Earth. However, Max gets up, determined not to leave, because Siraksh is also his home. He vowed to do anything to save Siraksh, but not by using radiation and controlling people like Stranach. Max is adamant that he will not let the tower be rebuilt. Finally, Max concentrates his energy and launches a powerful attack on Stranach, causing him to be thrown back. Stranach quickly recovers and rises swiftly, but not to fight. Max's confidence makes Stranach realize they must work together to save Serex and its inhabitants. Thanks for watching our recap. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our exciting movie journeys. Share your thoughts in the comments and join us next time.